Good morning. Welcome to the Gospel of Joy. My name is Reverend Josh Knappenberger. I'm the pastor at St. James UCC in Allentown, PA. And in case you're wondering why such a lackluster uh, greeting this morning, I woke up with a laser beam headache and I have a little bit of nausea and some congestion, so I'm not feeling too well. But uh, I'm taking care of myself. I'll show you a little bit more about that later, but I will tell you a story about my daughter. She is such a mommy. <laughs> she said, Daddy, while you're resting in your room today, I'm going to bring you a cup of water. And she said so many other things. She, want, she says, I want you to stay in your jammies and lay down all day, and I'm going to do that after this, I promise. But, uh, you know, I, I still... Um, I still want to get this out because I still got some jokes for you, but uh, yeah, and I still got a little message for you, but it won't be as many jokes as normal. So if if you've been with us before, thank you, and welcome back. If this is your first time, I hope you enjoy this enough to come back tomorrow. If not, then I hope to give you enough laughs to get through today. Good morning, Fred. How are you? I'm glad glad you joined us. You can check out the YouTube channel, uh, St. James UCC Allentown, to um, uh, to catch up on any videos you may have missed before. If you want to hear the messages or see the buddies or hear the jokes, uh, you can um, you can check it out there. And uh, yeah, and don't forget to tag, tell, and share uh, with your friends this video. Just people who may be down, maybe need a laugh, um, maybe need to be reminded that laughter is a good thing and it's the best medicine in a time like now. Um, just remember, joy and laughter doesn't do very much good if it doesn't go anywhere. Also in front of St. James UCC on 15th Street, there's a box of children's books for the community. This is a give, a, a leave and take box. You can donate books directly to the box, to the ministry. Or you can take a book home if there are some there. There may not be any there, but, uh, you know, if there are, you're welcome to take one. It's it's a lending library, so try to remember to bring it back. Um, yeah, it's just, ready, just a good way to get out of the house. Okay, so before I get on to my buddies, those of you who interviewed me at St. James UCC, I'm not sure you understand the depth of my... <laughs> of my Transformers uh, mania. <laughs> I No, not mania. Um, my Transformers fandom. We'll call it fandom. And it goes to the point that when I get sick, when I don't feel well, um, I have a special blanket that I, that I um, cover myself with, and it usually makes me feel better. It is... There's Optimus Prime there. There's Bumblebee there. So it usually makes me feel better. <sighs> so yes, that is that's one thing I'm doing to take care of myself right now. Um, good morning, Margaret. Good morning, Cynthia. Good morning, Patrick. Heretic in residence. It's great to have you with us as always. Uh, good morning, Joni. So. <sighs> I'm just not 100%. I'm doing the best I can today. Uh, the headache is still there. So my buddies. All right. Yesterday, I, I want to show you something that I didn't show you on the buddy on one of the buddies I showed you yesterday. One of the Dinobot buddies. Um, and that is, you'll remember I showed this guy to you yesterday, but I didn't show you that his eyes light up. And that that's uh <laughs> that's a pretty cool feature and i i'm counting my blanket as one of the buddies today so the other buddy i bought i brought is the other um live action movie dinobot i have so here's the other one and he's pretty big too and guess what Uh, it's supposed to light up. Come on. 
his visor lights up too. So he's got eyes too. Just to give you an idea of how big these Dinobots are supposed to be, Optimus Prime is supposed to be just around 30 feet, which is as tall as a, a house, I'd say. These guys are supposed to be 100 feet, which if you, if you have an idea of Steel Force, if you've seen Steel Force, um, it's about half the height of Steel Force, and that's the height of these Dinobots from the movies. So, yeah, they're, they're pretty big in, in, in the movies. So he does look like Ultraman, Patrick. He does look a little bit like Ultraman. Yes, I know Mania is probably right, but that's a little extreme of a term. Anyway, good morning, Joni. Good morning, Edna. And good morning, Patrick. Um, so, all right. And I'm going to put these guys in dinosaur mode for you eventually and show them to you there. They, they'll cool in dinosaur mode. So yesterday, I talked about the protests and the desperation of people who are afraid. Afraid on both sides of the argument. One side, afraid opening up too quickly. And the other side, afraid that without work and money, their businesses and jobs will disappear. And I talked about the protests themselves. Is it worth it to protest mob-like when everyone around could get sick and die? Is it practical to display your support of the Constitution by openly carrying a big gun in the protest? And these people are afraid just as we are. But the protests can make us feel more afraid. Desperation leads to acts that can be much worse than just protesting. And here's the thing. We can't control their fear. We can't control them at all. But we also must understand they're using their fear as a way to try to control others. They believe their fear can control other people. In some cases, it causes the outcome they desire, but that's not control. It just feels like control. The truth is, control over anything but yourself is an illusion. You can control when you try to go to the grocery store, but you can't control if the starter in your car is going to wear out and not let you turn the car on. We can't control the fear of these protesters. We can only control our own. And that can sometimes cause us to feel powerless. This reality actually makes us far more powerful. Through choosing hope and fear over hope and faith over fear, we find a release and a power that those who live in fear will rarely ever know. And God calls our fear to Him. God calls our need to control to him so that we can turn our need for fear and control into hope. To the Israelites in the desert, begging for water, threatening to go back to slavery in Egypt, Moses put their fear into God's hands and God gave them water from a rock. Not from the ground. From a, from a rock. For David, going up against Goliath, he gave God his fear, and God gave him stones and a slingshot. And in the ultimate expression, Jesus gave God the cup of suffering, and God gave him resurrection on Easter morning. Amazing things happen when we hand our fear to God. And we can't force others to put their fear into God's hands. But we can put our fear into God's hands. When we do, we find the rest of the world can do as they will. It doesn't matter. 
because our fear turns into the ultimate expression of our faith. And that is, you know, I'm going to ask you to say it with me. Whether we live or whether we die, we belong to Jesus Christ. Amen. On with the funnies. Uh, there's not going to be as many today, but uh, I'm still going to. I'm not going to let. I'm not going to let you leave without some funnies, just because I'm not feeling, feeling 100. percent um, So let's see. We'll start with a. <laughs> this one's really, uh, really good. Good morning, Tammy. Good morning, Carl. You came in right at. This is a really good joke right here. Um, in my opinion, it's entitled Truth or Care. One Sunday morning, Pastor Bob advised his congregation, next week I plan to preach about the sin of lying. In preparation for my message, I want you all to read Mark chapter 17. The following Sunday, the Reverend asked for a show of hands from those who had read Mark 17. Every hand went up every hand in the church. Bob smiled and announced, well, Mark only has 16 chapters. I will now proceed with my sermon on the sin of lying. <laughs> oh, boy. And this one's entitled, Whoops. Oh, and don't forget to comment on which joke is your favorite so we get some conversation going. This one's entitled, Whoops. My Protestant clergy friend was speaking with a Catholic priest and wanted to establish a solid friendship. He spoke of many things and felt it was going well. But in an instant, he undid all the good he had done. He asked if, father's, if Father Patty's father had been a priest too. You know, that reminds me of some... of. Uh, just, just some stories. Uh, there's a movie called Calvary, and it's not a funny movie, but it's got uh, Brandon Gleason in it, and he plays this priest, and he has a daughter. And the, and the question's asked, how do you have a daughter if you're a priest? He said, I became a priest after my wife died. So it is possible to have a child and be a priest. But another more lighthearted story um, when I was in the Boy Scouts, my Boy Scout troop had mostly Catholic boys in, and we met in a Catholic church and all that stuff. And uh, my dad was a leader in the Boy Scout troop. So one day, one of the other leaders asked my dad, somebody along the way, I think it was one of the, one of the boys asked my dad, they, they knew he was a pastor, but they asked him, are you a priest? My dad said, oh, no. They asked him, are you Catholic? My dad said, no, I'm not Catholic. If I was Catholic, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> yeah, it's funnier when I have my thoughts together about it, but um, he was there because of me, of course, and I was his son. Anyway, um, so have some have some other jokes written by the professionals here. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes. We are on to the last five of the top ten pickup lines in a singles church. Number five, don't worry. I'm attracted to you purely in a spiritual way. Number four, I'm Episcopalian. What's your sign? Number three, I think you're sitting on my Bible. Number two, we didn't read any good Bible passages lately. Number one, so you worship here often? That was sent in by David Briggs, AP religion writer. Um, that reminds me of a, a music video I once saw. It's adapted from uh, the 90s song by Sir Mix-a-Lot. Those of you who lived in the 90s will know the song that I'm talking about. Um, it's called, I Like Big Book and I Cannot Lie, and it's about a guy who likes 
women who read the Bible. So you can look that up on YouTube. Uh, it's a funny, it's it, it, it's a funny video, but it, it, it's good. Um, so uh, okay. The quickest way for a mother to get her children to sit down, the quickest way for her, for a mother to get her children's attention, is to sit down and look comfortable. Stacy, I know you're watching. There you go. <laughs> uh, one more. That was sent in by Ralph J. Minio of North Baltimore, Ohio. And one more. Mama says, "What do you mean, parental discretion advised? How about a little network discretion?" Pastor J Denny J. Brake, Raleigh, North Carolina. I don't really get that one, but uh, I'm sure some of you might. And I have some cartoons for us. Okay, first one we're going to look at is this one right here. So it's got a pastor entering the sanctuary, and it says... They were hanging on to my every word. I haven't had that feeling since I called a game of bingo. <laughs> and then over here, this one's cute. It's a family circus. I want this to be a good day, Mommy. Is this the right side of the bed to get up on? And the other one I have marked. Oh. Oh. This one may be a little difficult to see. It says in Crusader times, and it's got Crusaders attacking a castle. And there's a sign out front that says sail pending because the outcome of the battle will decide whether or not they bought the place with their, their fighting, I guess. So that, that, that one's kind of funny. Okay. All right. Will you pray with me? Lord, help us to remember that we cannot control the fear of others, only our own. Help us to put our fear into your hands, that you may know, that we may know that you are our God, and remember the times in which humans put fear in, into your hands and you bless them with water, with the defeat of a giant, and with the death of sin and shame. We ask that you be with us in the days ahead as fear will continue to grow around us. Keep our fear into, in your hands, that we may trust you and see the hope that you bring us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. So, thank you for joining us. Remember to stay healthy and stay safe. <laughs> Don't do what I'm doing, whatever that is, uh, that makes me not feeling well. By the way, uh, what I'm feeling is none of the COVID symptoms. I don't have a cough. I don't have a fever and I don't have shortness of breath. So don't, don't worry. This is just a couple days here. I think we'll find out tomorrow, of course, but don't, don't, don't worry for me. You can pray for me, but don't, don't be overly worried about me. Um, I'll be fine. Just you stay healthy, stay safe, keep laughing. And remember to do one thing that brings you joy every day. And thank you for giving me your ideas for the daily message with what you're struggling with. It, it has helped me a lot to spark my mind and to spark um, what what you need to hear and what what you need to what needs to be addressed and how you feel where you feel that you need the hope in your life. So. Uh, you can leave a message in the comments for it. You can uh, private message me if it's too, if it's sensitive and you want me to address it. I'll do my best to address it. Remember, I am here at 10.30 every morning for the duration of the stay-at-home order. I will see you tomorrow.
God bless. And may God keep you in the stitches of laughter and love today, tomorrow, and into eternal life. Amen. God bless. I'm going to get some rest. See you all tomorrow.